program is uh, is Indigenous Outlook. Okay. Indigenous Outlook. That's the name, and it's a platform for everything Indigenous. Okay. Uh, you know, we have created this platform for all Indigenous people, where you can come on, come on, and discuss everything Indigenous. The ambassador have been with us for a very long time. She has been on many, many times. You know, speaking speaking about what is happening with indigenous people in the different countries. In fact, last last year she was all over the place. You know, she, Guyana, Dominica, all over, and and of course Jamaica virtually more than one time. So, if if you could, we if we could start with you, Prince, and you could tell us, you know, what is happening now in Nigeria. Give us something on your country. Well, as you know, Nigeria it's um, is the largest country in Africa, in Africa, and with the largest population of about two hundred and nine million. It's also the largest economy. Nine million. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yes. two hundred and nine. With popul- with um, with the is the largest economy in Africa. Nigerian African market, which is the new African free trade, it's a market of one point two, and Nigeria has two hundred and nine, which means Nigeria has one sixth of African population. The state of Lagos yes. is. Um, has a population of slightly over 20 million people, but is the fifth largest, wow. is the fifth largest economy in Africa. And that is only one state. Nigeria has 36 states and one federal capital. Nigeria is mm-hmm. the home of virtually all the black people. And um, part of some of the things we are looking at is that we have created, when you look at the history of black people, most of them at least um, come from this part of the world. Oh, yes. And what what we're trying to do is to facilitate and let people know have a feel of home. There is nothing, for example, you stopping you from coming to Africa. There is nothing from our building a relationship in such a way that we can share experience. Today, we talk about diaspora. People talk about the reminiscences, but the knowledge that we have in the black people is more than far, far more than the money. And I believe that this is something that we need to, to start addressing. One other point that I think I should need to mention is that people are talk about migration. I believe people must work together. We should be able to share experience. We should be able to share knowledge. Organizations like UNDP, they are, they, they are formed by people. They are not just structures. But again, we must believe in structure. And at the same time, we must endow our people, invest in education, invest in knowledge. And I think that is very important. Nigeria is on the verge of... Um, another election in the next 18 months. And of course, that means uh, Nigeria president is virtually the most powerful person in the world. And um, there is so much to be done. There is so much available. The market itself is available. And one of the interesting things with the uh, Nigeria market is that Nigeria produce the highest number of cassava in the world. Mm. So that means we can share knowledge, our economy, our climate, our culture, our cost of. It's about the same as your area. And I believe, to me, the takeaway is that we must build relationship, we must trust each other, we must open up, we must know, we must try and see each other, we must invest in ourselves because that will also help us to invest in the future. Nobody is going to do it for us. About 65% of Nigerians are young people. 
And when I say young, I mean young, between the ages of between the ages of one to 35 or 40. And that constitutes about 70%. And they are the future. And you can find Nigerians anywhere in the world. And one advantage with uh, the Nigerians outside is that most of them are educated. They may have their, we may have some, some um, bad rotting eggs and apples, but nevertheless, most of them are good, tasteful, and um, lovely apples that you, ambassador, and a host of others will want to taste. So on the whole, Nigeria is a place for the black people, is a home. Nigeria provides home because for one in every five black people in the world is a Nigerian. And the way things are going with also Nigeria um, having the largest refinery, one of the largest refinery, well, at least the largest in Africa, and one of the largest private refinery in the world, I believe that this is something that one needs to look at. I must also mention that in terms of culture, the largest art collector in the whole of Africa is a Nigerian. Here is somebody who has more than 7,000 artworks from all parts of the world, and part of it he has loaned to a university. For us, we are, more in, we are looking at various areas. The organization I work for, or organizations I work for, Sysme Consulting, for example, is a multidisciplinary organization. We are very much involved in sustainable development. I've been a negotiator. I've been in the system for since 1990. So we're really talking. I've been in, on the UN system as a negotiator. I was happened to be one of those people who negotiated any change fund. I've been one of those people who have been very much active in looking at what the environment should look at. Apart from the fact that I had a singular um, opportunity of being a director of the stock exchange, and I pioneered this. The area of core, we are very involved because we are gallery, protecting our area. So clearly, I think one of the things that we need to do is to reach out. Yo, I'm happy that the ambassador invited me on this, on this basis. But I think we need to do more. Yes, we, need to, we need to know ourselves. We need to, I mean, somebody like me should be able to have a platform to come to your area and share knowledge. We should be able, nobody is going to develop a nations for us. We have to do it. So I think on the whole, we must develop humanity because um, one area which I'm very much involved is in advancing knowledge and managing knowledge because man is at the center. And unless we appreciate the fact that today we are talking about the world of knowledge, it's a knowledge society, it's a knowledge economy. So we must be there. It's an age of technology, but technology must have human faith. It's an age where we need to, to develop our creativity. I don't see any reason why we cannot get a film or your film to come to Africa. We must be able to create a market. Why should a lot of people be using a market when people like us were there? But what is lacking is that we don't know ourselves. There's no meeting point. There's no contact. There's no relationship. And I think if you can do that, the world will be a better place for all of us. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. First one is, the, the, we are in the Caribbean region, and you know, all this this show is all about the Caribbean and yes. Africa. Why isn't the Caribbean and Africa trading in a serious way? Why are we not having any tourism? both ways, things like that. What is holding that back? I've just told you, I said so. I said uh, we don't know ourselves. We don't reach out. We must, be we, must, we, must, we must be relationship. We must move away from our territory. We must move out. You see, one of the greatest things that God has done is humanity. 
And because we are so distant from each other, we don't exchange ideas. We don't, for example, there is something, that, there are certain things that you have in the Caribbean that you don't have. And I want to challenge you. My challenge is that yourself, myself, and the ambassador should take the leadership role of, of taking that point which you said and answer the question why. You must find answer to why. And that answer to why is that we need to reach out, we need to trust each other, we need to be able to relate. Look, COVID has taught us one thing, that we don't need to be together. Look, I'm miles away from you, but we are talking. And one of the greatest things in life is communication. It's the ability oh, yes. to be able for you and I to communicate. And that is the strength. One of my major interests is being, being in the press. I've written books. i worked. I started producing business television. I've been a writer. Uh, I, I love creativity. And these are some of the things that we need to. You must be able to reach me. I should be able to reach you. So that is the answer to your question. Nobody is going to solve it for us. Animals cannot solve it. We human beings must solve it. And I think that the, the, the ambassador wants to say something. Yes. It will be useful yes, to hear that yes. voice. First of all, I want to thank you, your eminence, for being at short notice responding to this call. Because um, initially, I would have been the feature guest. However, I am in 2024, we are deciding to change the narrative and the whole concept of indigenous really needs to embrace Africa because that's the origin for all of us. And so um, I am in agreement in terms of the question that we are the ones that we are waiting for, meaning that we have to take the initiative and the leadership comes from our side, from our part of the world. And I just wanted to say that um, the beauty about Garifuna Nation and Garifuna is that we embrace both sides. We are first peoples here in the Americas and we are also with the African. And that's important part of complementing the two. So um, I want to encourage um, Flavius that we, have, we continue to have this conversation where we welcome Africa as part of our indigeneity, because previously we were thinking about just being on this side of the Atlantic Ocean, and that limits, that really limits our understanding of who we are. So we are the ones who need to reach out to, to invite Africa to us and to go to Africa ourselves in these conversations. When it comes to the economics, there is absolutely no excuse. We have to, and I'm speaking from the part of the Garifuna Nation, that we are, we have signed a memorandum of understanding with Nigeria, which we are going to share with um, Prince Organization and other colleagues, which we are going to share publicly shortly with the intention of breaking the cycle of ignorance about ourselves. Even I found on my pilgrimage in the Caribbean and in the United States, I discovered that even we in the Caribbean know very little about one another. And so I want to congratulate you for this platform that you have, Flavius, which gives us an opportunity to share, to learn from one another, and to be proactive and to be intentional. Well, thank you very much, um, Your Excellency. Before the host pick it up, I do agree wholeheartedly with you. And uh, that is why I want to emphasize the point that humanity is one. If you take a pin and punch yourself, if anything comes out that is not red, then you are sick. And that means the brotherhood must be maintained. The other point I would like to emphasize is that we need to share knowledge. Nigeria is a vast country. If we get it right, you may be surprised that you find Nigeria, and of course, Nigerians are entrepreneurs. They are risk takers. They may, you may find out that people will come to, they are looking for opportunities. 
you may find out that people may come and bring investment to, to, to Garifuna Nation. And also look at Central America. My own view about this thing is that if we do it right, it opens the door for everybody. You can have somebody in that area who manufacture or who does things. And a market of 209 is quite big. Why should we allow people to come in and be doing it for us? Well, we can both share this knowledge and our experience together. So that's my, my, my take on this matter. And I hope um, that our host will want to continue with his question. Exactly. I remember the first time I went to Africa. I, I went to Dakar, Senegal. That was some time ago. And I, I wept. Um, I did not have the language to understand the impact that being in Africa had on me. Um, and one of the things that I discovered was I, I realized that my life was, my life being here in the Americas is incomplete. It's only like being half of me because I did not realize until I went to Africa the amount of resources in terms of scholarly work universities um, and the resources that are there, even in terms of the history. And I wept not out of sadness, but out of appreciation that the, the connection, the reconnection is important in terms of becoming whole, that we don't only have to go to universities in the United States or in Europe, we have our own scholars in, in Africa, which is our source. And so um, it's very important to present that moving forward. Many of the questions that we have in the Caribbean and Latin America can be answered by dialogue and exchange with our Afri African brothers and sisters. Specifically, some of our countries have discovered oil and we are in a quandary as to how to develop the oil that is found in our country. Why not have dialogue with our African brothers and sisters who have had this experience uh, and the approaches that they have, you have taken, especially when it comes to economics and um, sustainable development. So I really think this is a powerful conversation that has just begun and look forward to having more exchanges, particularly of our children and our young people so that they don't live in the ignorance that we allowed ourselves to live in and what we believed in the media. Most of what the media promotes about Africa is wrong. It's a whole set of lies it is incomplete, but we cannot blame the media or hold the media responsible for our um, level of ignorance. I intentionally, intentionally use the word ignorance because ignorance is based on lack of knowledge. So we are the ones who have the responsibility to break the cycle. And therefore I really want to, um, congratulate you, Prince, and I want people who are listening to know that Prince is not like Prince in Disneyland or Disney World, because oftentimes those of us who live in this side of the world allow um, this media, this US uh, media to influence our thought process. So we have to create our own media and move forward with that. So I'm very, I'm thrilled that the Garifuda Nation is taking this bold step and also the real stuff podcast, um, Flavius, in terms of widening the conversation about who we are and how we can be intentional. I was sharing with um, Sister Kaina yesterday that I was in a conversation about sports and the importance of sports in the Caribbean. And the I remember there was an African runner, I can't remember his name, who went to the Olympics and people were baffled and they were surprised that he was able to win many, many of the prizes 
even though he had not had access to the usual type of training that is offered in the West. But this runner, this runner was just naturally, as an African, a runner out of the, the depths of his uh, upbringing as a young man in his community. And these are the kind of richness that we want to draw out intentionally, that we don't have to speak from a place of poverty because we are people who are wealthy from time immemorial. Thank you, thank, thank, you, thank you, Cynthia. And we welcome Kaina. Kaina, please join in now, please. Could you unmute your mic? Yes. Uh, I'm just joining in. I just joined in to hear the conversation. Not yet sure the, full, the fullness of the conversation, but it's um, based on what I've heard so far, it's important to educate ourselves as individuals um, of what is, as well as to be aware of the um, be aware of what the, the world kind of teaches and find the truth in everything. And so, um, yes, yeah, so I'm just listening and hearing more of what the conversation is about. Really about the One interaction the between Africa yeah, and, and the Caribbean. Go ahead, Cynthia. Uh, one of the questions that came up in the sports conversation that I was in yesterday had to do with the question as to why is it or how is it can Caribbean people benefit from sports economically in the region? How can we take a position of strength by being involved in sports? And many times, if we notice in the sports arena, um, the best runners or the best athletes are often those who are, I will say, of African ascent. I don't say African descent because descent suggests that we are going down. And um, what I was learning is that many times sports is an opportunity to acclaim one's ancestry and to to take certain positions. I will never forget when I went to um, Soweto some time back that in order to get to Soweto, one needed to get a document that would make you honorary white. And it really <laughs> had an impact on me because I recall when the cricketers from different parts of the Caribbean took a stand that they would not go to South Africa as long as the apartheid situation continued, they would not go to play in South Africa. And so I think it is these kinds of powerful connections and principles that really give us an opportunity to support one another. But the key question that I like that Prince always brings up is how can we use our position and positioning to advance our people. How can the fact that Simone Biles, who has links to the Garifuna people, how can her positioning be used to filter back to the condition of life of the Garifuna people? So the challenge is for us to be intentional and to be proactive and to have conversations with our sports people both ways. One, to find ways in which we can support young men and young women like Kaina to be successful sports athletes in the world. And two, how can we support giving back to the development of our communities, our indigenous communities from where they come? Well, I think um, if I may just react to that, I think one of the things that we, we, we need to encourage 
is that we need to bring people who are role models, who are sports people, sports women, footballers that we have seen, people we have seen in the film. Let them come in and spend one day or something, give a lecture. How did you get to this stage? And it will have an impact on these people. And one of the things also that we need to, 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 to address is that there is a lot of money around the world. We need to search for it. When we get it, these people can assist because there is not, nothing more. You see, there is a difference between what is and what ought to be. Your Excellency, you have said what ought to be, but what is is a reality. If you can get the best of African footballers, African, those people have made names in the English Premier League. They will come in, the same with the film, the same with people from Garifuna. Let them come round. Let, let, what you see is different from what you hear. What you see is reality. And that, to me, is, is something that we must address. People want to see it. Seeing is believing. And I think we should try and do something about that. Wonderful, wonderful. I think I, I, I agree with you completely. I agree with you completely. OK, we are approaching the end. We have about 10 minutes to go. Oh, no. It was too <laughs> short. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I, um... we, we, we can do 15 minutes, yeah. Well, Mr. Oud, Mr. Oud, can I just make a statement? Yes. I, I think we should, this should not be the end of the program. We should also create a continuous program. We can look at other people, yes. let them share yes. experience. Yes. That is why I told you that one takeaway from this our discussion today is that we are making friends with each other. We are building relationship. And that is very, very, very important. And I, like I always tell ambassador, you must bring a, something to do with your culture, something to do with your dance, something to do with your music. In, in, we, are, we are trying to develop what you call the, the Yoruba Center worldwide. If in Brazil, Yoruba can become the official language, and it has an historical, historical um, giving. It's not just by accident. So and I think these are some of the things that we need to, to get together. And don't forget that the typical Englishman, when you first meet, they will introduce yourself to each other. The second time when he meets you, he say, hello, John, how are you? The third time when he meets you, he say, can we have a cup of tea? The fourth time that we, oh, let's go to the club. I think that is how to build relationship. And if you can build that relationship, we have something for our children and our children's children to take away. Because they will have opportunity of the old, the old memory they have of, their, of what their parents mentioned to them. They will now realize that there is a difference between what is and what ought to be. I think that, to me, is something that we need to address. I think one of the strengths of an indigenous culture and way of being, uh, which uh, really impresses me about Africa, is um, the way of respect, dignity, and honor, um, which, when it comes out of alignment, there are ways in which um, we go back to our ancestral ways of peace, of reconciliation, and at oneness. This is a Garifuna way as well that we are pushing to get back to. Uh, I know there are issues going on in Jamaica concerning the Maroons, and what I the message we send to the Maroon leaders is to go back to the ways that we were originally and ancestrally. Principle number one, 
we do not wash our dirty linen in public. And I'm speaking specifically about Garifuna. A Garifuna nation, we have many leaders and groups that have different points of view, but you will never or rarely, if you have a Garifuna leader who is worth his or her salt, one of our principles is that in the public domain, we do not wash our linen there. We come within our sacred space and we trash it out among ourselves. And that is not to give the impression that as Garifuna people, we do not have issues or differences. We do. And we also have the sacred space called the Dabuyeba. In the Dabuyeba, we present the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is also, I would imagine, Yoruba. I don't know much, but I need to know more. I want to know more about being Yoruba. I believe I am. This is one of the principles that our elders and our, our sacred leaders facilitate uh, a, a, a transformation or a addressing of these issues in our relationships that are extremely difficult. I know, for example, I went to Suriname at one point in the forests of Suriname, and there were some issues going on with a family, a young couple. And do you know, Flavius, that couple was circle, circled by the elders and the entire um, leaders of the community. And they listened and listened, and nobody was going to leave that space until there had been a, been a resolution. I think that is a powerful indigenous African way of being that we need to go back to, bring our people together and work through our issues in a sacred space with our, what you all would call prayers and rituals and so on. And it is always going to come up with some resolution that seems to be miraculous. Many people, for example, don't understand how could it be that Nelson Mandela was able to work with the very people who were his perpetrators. In Rwanda, people cannot understand how it is that Rwanda is bouncing back. In Liberia, there are many African ways of being that always go deep, deep and bring us back into the higher way of who we are as dignified kings and queens and princes and princesses. That is the call for us. Thank you very much. Yeah, that is that is very profound. Yes, yes. And but back to Prince Fadina. This yes, program, please. this program will always be here. But what 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 we're gonna do? We're gonna schedule a, a continuation to this in a few weeks. Yeah. And we will definitely invite you and Karina and the ambassador back. And whoever else that she thinks, you know, should be with us at that time. But we can, we will make this a continue because this is a huge topic. And yeah. Africa, I mean, we are Africa, we are Caribbean, we are, we are part of Africa, but we are, so, we are still so far apart, you know, to get to Africa, you have to travel, uh, I mean, days and days when it, it could be a few hours. Things like that, we have to address and address them seriously. And I, I, I mean, tourism, Caribbean is a tourism mecca, but, but we're not getting to, you know, we're not traveling to or getting people from Africa as tourists. And in the other trades, you know, in the other areas where we can trade, I don't think, like you said, enough is not being done. We have not been reaching out. So we want to put it out there that we are willing to, to help, you know, to enable this whole discussion to move forward. And that is very, very, very important. You know, we, are, we have been struggling too long and we are struggling in the wrong place, you know. We are struggling, still struggling with our oppressors when Africa is there that we need to hold on closer to, to be more entwined with, you know. 
so I I I appreciate I appreciate the invitation for us to keep pushing this conversation so we can get something positive out of it. So if you are in the diaspora or you are in Africa, I mean we are all Africans, but we need to show it. We need to work together more and be together more. Not just work together more, but be together more. By you know, challenge by traveling, exchanging ideas and all of that. Well, this is my point Davis, of view. Can you say that Africa? Can I say that Africa is already in the Americas, and you are helping me to realize how much of a gift Garifuna is? Because my elders, before um, they, some of them never physically went to Africa, but Africa is in them. And they would share oh, yes. with oh, us yes. growing up as well. I remember about Africa, about about things African without physically having gone there. So we have to shift our mindset from physically just getting on a plane. But even before, even before WhatsApp, Zoom, and so on, the African way of being is inside of us. So that is what we embrace because some of us might never physically get to Africa, but our mindset needs to get there like now. And oh, we yes. have a lot of Africa in us already, which we can embrace. And your program is a powerful way in which to do that. Because many people dream about the United States and, and, and all of that long before they even get there. Some of them never get oh, yes. there but the products from the United States get here and then our mindset has shifted into this US way of being without physically going there. So I would like to really encourage us to dream big, to have vision, and it's going to manifest and actualize itself, itself in the way that we are. I knew that my elders were, were wearing outfits from Africa even though they had never gone there. When I arrived in Africa and I yes. saw it, I was asking, how was that possible? But it begins with the mindset <laughs> that we are changing. You, you mentioned a very important point, Miss Cynthia, about the products of America getting into our homes. I, I, look, I really look forward to more of the product of Africa coming into our homes, which can help strengthen the shift that we need to, to recognize that there is so much richness within ourselves of African descent, but also richness in Africa and change that mindset from, oh, Africa is this, Africa is that, and to that positive mindset where it shows that Africa has so much. And I really like how you talked about the principle. It, it, it also made me think about the, the rite of passage that many of us has um, seems to have lost due to what has been thrown at us, which was also our strength um, of uniting and being in one and making that, uh, um, having that relationship. So I think this conversation, I believe, that, not I think, this conversation is very powerful as to going back to trading with ourselves and finding um that um, sustainable economic within ourselves as people of African descent. I, I really like this conversation. Thanks for inviting me in. Yeah, man, thank you for the point. The point. Yes. I, I, did a, I did a paper once around the concept of con content that we consume. And I, and I, and I said in that paper that we need to change, we need to sh shift the whole thing upside down. Because right now the Caribbean is consuming probably 90% American and other, other content. And we need, to, we need to have it the other way around where the majority of our content, over 70%, should be Caribbean and, and African. And then the Americas and the European yes. content down to about 30% at most. But, but right now exactly. it's closer to a hundred percent it's closer to a hundred percent than anything. And that is I think that is one of the first things that we have to 
Correct. Go ahead, Cynthia. We can do it. Look what, look what Bob Marley did for the world. Oh, yes. Look at it. Oh, yes. And oh, yes. much of our music. You know, so it's possible for us. We are already making an impact. It's for us to embrace it and to acknowledge it and to package it in a way that works for us and not to make ourselves so vulnerable. We are the ones who are making ourselves vulnerable to outside forces. We are the leaders that we are waiting for right here on this platform, Flavius. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I must thank, very... thank you, the host, for, for and also the ambassador for inviting me. I believe we have laid the foundation we must not allow this opportunity to go. We are building institutions, we are building homes, we are building the future. And please, I request that let us continue to build it. We cannot leave it. Rome was not built in the day. The Definitely. first step is very, very important. And that is breaking the barrier to communication. I believe we are broken that barrier. And I think we need to do more. We need to reach each other. We need to talk more to each other. We need to tell our people what is rather than what ought to be. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, you all, for coming. Thank you. And you know, we have to we have to close off now. Thank you very much. But I Thank will you. I will get in I will get in touch. Thank you, excellent. With, with our much. next with, with our next me. our next meeting here. Thank yes. you very much for inviting me. And you know, any time at your request, I shall be available. Yeah, well, Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Interestingly, Thank I, you very much. I, I believe by now, I should be getting the citizenship of um, Belize. <laughs> yes, I'm okay, sure. OK, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and the yes. Garifuna Nation. <laughs> and the Garifuna Nation. Of course. Definitely. Yes. I'm, I'm sure. So until, I, until next I, time. I'm yes. sure I can be the Council for Africa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's 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 speak again soon. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. Okay, the okay. power of technology. We are miles away from each other. Absolutely. And we can hear each other's voice. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. For coming. Thank, yes. you. Thank you. And thank you. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank yes. You. This is this is so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So un until then, yes. Thank you. Thank you. You lead us to fly. You be love the way I was. I do go alive. Lead a moi, lead a song to love. Lead a moi, lead a song to love. Well, unfortunately, this is it. Till next time. Bless. Forget what I was trying to say I no longer do what I was gonna do But you're no good for me That's why men will set me a pick of flee Me I fi take away me sad Me I fi take away me sad Me I fi eye like a thief in a night Me I fi get all the side Yeah.